sciencey day of the land, a sciencey day to sing. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a lab mate just like you. I've always wanted to work in a laboratory with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my lab mate? Won't you please? Won't you please? Won't you Today, we're going to learn about how to make soap. Soap is one of these items that we're really in need of right now, and we might be out of it at the grocery store. So we're going to use some regular kitchen chemicals. Um, lye may not be as readily available as vegetable oil, but we will be making soap from vegetable oil today. Won't you join me to see how soap is made? To make soap, we only need a few simple reagents and reactants. Be sure to write down the volumes and amounts in your observations as you see them on the screen. First, we have vegetable oil, then 20% sodium hydroxide, which is also known as lye, ethanol, saturated sodium chloride, and then in the end, we'll use baking soda to help neutralize our waste product. We start by heating a water bath to where it just starts to boil and then to a 100 milliliter beaker that already has a stir bar in it. We're going to add all of our reactants and reagents that we need to as mentioned in the lab manual. Vegetable oil first. And then sodium hydroxide solution. I poured it into the graduated cylinder here to make sure to rinse all of that vegetable oil out as much as possible. And then ethanol. I used ethanol to rinse the graduated cylinder as well. Once all of that is poured into the beaker, the beaker can then be put into the hot water bath where the level of the reaction liquid is just at or below the hot water to make sure that it's fully heating. And you want it to be stirring too to make sure that the two layers can be mixed together while the reaction is proceeding. Here you should be able to see the two layers, the oil layer on top and then the aqueous layer is on bottom. And after a while and with good stirring, the layers go away. This is because the reaction is proceeding and now they're not two separate distinct layers because of their polarities. Everything is reacting with each other and solid is being formed. You can see the solid film layer at the top of the beaker that contains the reaction mixture. Anytime a mixture becomes heterogeneous, it's always a good idea to make sure that it's mixing well. And so sometimes you might want to use a stir bar to mix any solids that are forming just to make sure that it is all a homogeneous mixture. Also mention that if the volume of the reaction mixture started to go down 
to maintain the volume by adding a one-to-one -one mixture of ethanol and water. And so as needed, that was done as well in this experiment. When it was performed, whenever the ethanol water mixture was added, it would help dissolve some of that solid that had formed. And after 30 minutes, it's time to turn the reaction off. It has been completed. And so we can turn the heat off, turn the stirring off, remove the beaker from the hot water bath, add water to quench the reaction. Upon addition of the water, the mixture should be stirred just to make sure that all of the water has interacted with all of the unreacted parts and help to start the neutralization of the sodium hydroxide. Then the reaction mixture that has been quenched should be submerged in water, um, in ice water for 10 minutes. This allows for crystallization to occur. The Soap molecules have been dissolved. There's ethanol in this mixture and they dissolve in ethanol. But um, in the cold temperature, they start to crystallize. So we'll check in on it every few minutes to see the crystallization process. You can see how it's starting to get a little goopy in there. That's the soap molecules starting to come out of solution. Stirring the mixture can help disturb the solution and help um, more precipitate fall out of solution. Then after 10 minutes, it's time to remove our soap from the water bath. We decant as much liquid from this mixture as possible. Decanting is a process where you pour the liquid away from the solid slowly so that the solid can stay settled into the beaker and the liquid can pour out without having any of the solid come with it. It smells kind of soapy right now. And you can see the bubbles. decanting of the first liquid, then saturated sodium chloride has been chilling over ice and that cold saturated solution gets added to our soap mixture. What this does is it tries to remove as much of the water molecules from the soap as possible. The saturated sodium chloride is quote unquote thirsty for water. It is so saturated with salt and so any water 
that the soap is hanging on to would then go into the, the brine, the saturated sodium chloride solution. Then that solution or that mixture is decanted as well. It was a little difficult to keep the soap from falling out with the liquid and so I used another beaker uh, to hold the soap in while I poured the liquid out. Kind of like if you are pouring out grease after browning meat and you use the lid to hold the meat into the pan or the skillet while you um, drain the fat out. Here's what our crude soap product looks like. We will then use a Butner funnel to filter as much water and rinse it with cold water if possible. Now here, the procedure for doing a filtration, a vacuum filtration is really important. You need to pay attention to these steps. Whenever you have your Butner apparatus, the filter apparatus assembled, then the first thing you do is you put your filter paper in it and you try to get it to lie flat in that Butner funnel. I was using a spatula to try and press it up against the corners and crease it into place. And then you wet the filter paper with whatever the main solvent is that you're using. I wet it with water. And then you turn the water on uh, for your vacuum filtration apparatus and you check to see that there actually is a vacuum coming from that hose. You affix the hose to the filtration flask and then you pour your um, whatever it is to be filtered into your Butner funnel and let it filter. Once you have poured that in there and gotten it all in there, then you can rinse it with your cold solvent and typically you want it to be a cold solvent because hot solvents or warm solvents or even room temperature solvents could possibly dissolve whatever the uh, solid is that you're trying to isolate and you don't want to lose any of that. So I got all of the soap that I could transferred from the beaker into the Butner funnel and then I rinsed the Butner funnel and my stirring rod with cold water. This allows for any of the residual impurities that didn't get uh, removed during the workup. It allows for those to get removed too. So here's my cold water. It was chilling on the ice. And now I'm using it to get those final particles of soap out of that beaker and into the filter. Once all of that rinsing solvent has been added, then you should let your solid just sit under the vacuum for a few minutes to try and filter and dry as much of the solvent out and off of it as possible. At this point, I'm removing the stirring rod from the Butner funnel. I was able to get all of the soap particles off of it. None of the soap pieces were on the magnetic struggle. I'm moving around the solid that's in there to try and get the airflow from the vacuum to um, impact different areas of the solid that's in the Butner funnel. While I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm preparing for my next steps in the experiment. I like to be efficient in the laboratory. The last steps of filtration are really important. Whenever you're ready to stop the filtration, you need to remove the vacuum tubing from the filter flask first and then turn the water off after that. You never want to turn the water off first because it's under a vacuum and doing so might send water into your filter flask. Then we were supposed to weigh our product. 
first I masked the crystallizing dish that I weighed it into and then I got the mass of the product. I did tear out the balance so the value that you will see as the mass of the product is the actual mass of the product. You do not need to do any subtraction. These numbers however are really important for you to write down in your lab notebook under your observations. After obtaining the mass of the product, it's always important to clean up. A clean lab is a safe lab. In the non-halogenated waste, I put the filtrate of the filtration, and then I neutralized the sodium hydroxide decanted liquid with baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. Once that was neutralized, I put that down the drain with a lot of water. Now that we're done with the reaction, let's discuss what we did. We need to know the chemistry about making soap. We just did a saponification of vegetable oil. For this experiment, we're going to assume that vegetable oil is made up completely of soybean oil, which is linoleic acid. This triglyceride of linoleic acid is what comprises soybean oil. If we mixed it with three equivalents of sodium hydroxide, then we would get glycerol and sodium linoleate, three equivalents of it. What it does, I'm not going to show you the mechanism here, but it cleaves off the leaving group from our carboxylic acid. The ester gets cleaved off and then it gets protonated Then it gets protonated and the part that got cleaved off then from our hydroxide, that O comes into place, and sodium is our counter cation here. You want to see this mechanism with an ester? Sodium hydroxide, hydroxide attacks, make a bond, break a bond, makes our intermediate. We reform the pi bond and kick off the leaving group. And then this gets the proton from that because the anion on the carboxylate is more stable. So whenever you're doing these calculations, what you will need is the mass of the starting vegetable oil. Mass of starting vegetable oil. How much should we use? So that would be in grams. How much should we use? We use about 15 milliliters. So how can I figure out grams from milliliters? I can use density. If I want to cancel out mils and end up with grams, then I can use my density here, 0.0894 and one milliliter, and that will give me my mass of grams. I do not want any of you 
to use 15 mils as your starting amount. I showed you in the video the exact amount. I zoomed in on the graduated cylinder, and so it's not going to be exactly 15. It might be 14.9 or 15.1, whatever you estimate to be the amount, the volume of vegetable oil that I started with. And then once we figure that out, you'll have to figure out the theoretical yield. How much um, sodium linoleate, linoleate would have been formed in grams if all of this got converted? So you'll need to take your grams. Blank, blank grams vegetable oil. And you'll need to convert it to moles of vegetable oil. How are you going to do that with the molecular weight? And it's 879.44 for every mole. And then you need to convert it into moles of soap. Moles of sodium linoleate. linoleate. So this is where we use our coefficients. One vegetable oil gave me three moles of soap. And then I need to convert that into grams of soap. And how do I do that? With the molecular weight. Do I know the molecular weight of this? I can calculate it. I could calculate it from this. Because if I take um, one of these, there's three of those things, of those groups in every linoleic acid. So three of these things, we have C3H5, three carbons, five hydrogens from this part. And that's going to equal 879.44. So we can just do some algebra and solve for. So 879.44 minus the molecular weight of C3H5 divided by 3 equals the molecular weight of this. And so then we're going to take that number and add the molecular weight of sodium. And what that will give us is the, the molecular weight in grams for sodium linoleate. linoleate. Then you can take that number and put it here. And then you can do all this math and put it here. And that's your theoretical yield. Then you put actual over theoretical. And you multiply it by 100 and that will give you your percent. Isn't it such a good feeling to know that we've made something that's important for us, especially right now? So let's wash our hands with some of this homemade soap. It feels very oily and soapy as you would expect. And I'm going to wash my hands and show you the proper way to wash hands. 
We should sing a song. What's a song that you might know? ABCs is a good song. That's what Greg likes. Look, we're already starting to get some suds. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? Now my hands are nice and clean. I didn't get as many suds as from normal soap that I'd be able to buy from the store, but it still does the job. I'm gonna rinse it all off, and my hands will feel so fresh and so clean. Mmm, smells like vegetable oil. It's you I like.